this is going to be the part two of the video that you should have just watched. As you can see right here, it says corrupted video. It cut out when I was in the middle of talking, which is super annoying. But I'm going to go ahead and repair it here. And you guys can see like how it works on my end. And see if I'll be able to pull this video back up. But you probably already watched it, which means I shouldn't even have to show you this. But it was all the pop-ups and stuff on that page. I should not have stayed on that page. It's my fault. Hopefully this works. Oh, thank the Lord in heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, this is the part two to the original video, which is about 26 minutes and 33 seconds long. I currently don't have a title made up in my head right now, but I'll put out a post and whatnot, which you guys would already know this at the time of watching this video. So I'm just going to get back into what I was doing. All right, so I wasn't on this page. I was on the last one. And if this cuts out again, I'm going to be very upset <laughs> again. But it, it's along the same lines. I don't know where it cut out when I left off last time, so I'm just going to get right back into it. U.S. gun reform. Actor McConaughey, which is Matthew McConaughey. Relatives of victims urge lawmakers to act. This is what they do. They get these Hollywood people in here, and and they start going with the, with the whole Hollywood spew, and they're like, oh, well, these actors and all these people, they... They're trying to keep us safe. They they know the responsible thing to do. They're responsible and they, they act for us and we clap for them and we trust them because they played in our favorite movie and we've seen them on TV, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to trust them. This is one of those times. Traitor, this man is right here. Okay, let's see... Washington Reuters. Lawmakers shooting victims and advocates for stricter gun laws, including act actor Matthew McConaughey, spoke out in Washington on Tuesday for legislation to reduce mass shootings amid signs of movement on an issue that has st um, stimmied. Not sure how to say that. Congress for years. Democrats in the U.S. Senate said that they were encouraged by ongoing talks with Republicans. The White House said President Joe Biden simply wanted to see some kind of legislation passed, even if a deal could not be reached on its call to ban assault rifles, as Congress debates federal gun legislation after more than a decade of inaction on the issue. First of all, we went over their terminology for assault weapon, and it's literally every, any, any weapon that can be used for assault. So there you go. And we went over that the text of the legislation on this channel. I think it was uh, HR 5770, or maybe, maybe I'm getting that wrong. Don't, don't quote me on that. The renewed push to take on gun violence comes after a string of mass shootings around the country, including at a school in Uvalde, Texas, where 19 children and two teachers were killed on May 24th. Oscar-winning actor McConaughey, a native of Uvalde, met Biden at the White House and delivered an emotional plea for change from the White House podium, where he was introduced by Press Secretary Karen Jean Pierre as a gun owner. Huh. And he says, quote, make the loss of these lives matter. McConaughey urged, as he held up pictures of some of the child victims, showed the green sneakers that helped identify a 10-year-old girl's body. While we honor and acknowledge that the victims, we need to recognize that this time, this time seems that something is different, he said. Huh. He said this time it seems like something is different. Responsible parties in this debate seem to at least be committed to sitting down and having a real conversation about a new and improved path forward. Are you starting to understand yet exactly what's going on? Former Buffalo Fire Commissioner Garnell Whitfield, whose mother Ruth was killed in the Tops friendly markets attack that left 10 black people dead, told senators that they should step aside if they could not act. We're more than hurt. We're angry. We're mad as hell, he said at a news conference on Capitol Hill. My mother's life mattered. Your actions here today will tell us how much it matters to you. Here's something for you. If you really think any kind of legislation will stop 
somebody who does want to go out and hurt people, you think they're going to obey those laws? Those types of people don't obey laws anyways. They literally just... You never heard of uh, someone saying, hey, are, are you ready to roll up in this in this drive-by? No, man, I can't. I got to wait for my gum permit to come back. Come on. Let's get real. That's not what this is about. This is about disarming you and I, the law-abiding free citizens of the United States of America. The former United States of America. Sorry. Last week in a speech from the White House declaring enough, enough, Biden called on Congress to ban assault weapons, expand background checks, and implement other gun control measures. They really want those sporting rifles, don't they? The Armalite. That's what AR stands for, by the way, and AR-15 stands for Armalite and Model 15. Single shot. It's not an automatic weapon. Automatic weapons have been illegal in this country for a good while now. It's a single shot rifle. Semi-automatic. So, it amazes me how people don't know much about guns, yet they get on and they start going off about how people are out there spraying bullets. Like, you're not spraying bullets unless you have an automatic weapon. <laughs> anyway. So, basically... They're going on about they're going to sit down and ready for this. Such moves do not have broad support in the Senate. However, which is divided evenly between Democrats and Republicans. Democrats largely favor stricter gun laws, while Republicans largely hold an expansive view of the Constitution's protection for the right to bear arms. No, they don't. Republicans talk about all the time how they believe in the Second Amendment, but, but, you know... Just like Trump with the red flag laws and this and that and take guns first. Worry about due process later and all this. Okay, so I'm going to move on because I'm running out of time. All right, here we go. Down into the meat and potatoes of this one. The transhumanist agenda. Loss of identity. And this is from... TruthComesToLight.com Okay, the face you wear matters. By wearing a mask over your face, you conceal your identity. One of the most common forms of human communication is facial expressions. Infants learn identity using facial expressions. Children learn to self-identify by observing body language without words. The ritual of mask wearing heralds and a loss of identity for a whole generation. Why obliterate individual identity for a fusion of identities? A fusion of identities is part of a one world order. A great reset that includes no individual, no independence, no liberty, no responsibility, no property, no rights, and no self-concept. What the fourth industrial revolution will lead to is a fusion of our physical, digital, and our biological identities. Klaus Schwab, the fourth industrial revolution, founder and executive chairman, of the World Economic Forum, International Organization for Public Private Cooperation. And yes, that is an actual quote from Klaus Schwab. A fusion of our physical, our digital, and our biological identities. Yeah, ours, not theirs. A one world order by another name is. The transhumanist agenda. The transhumanist agenda is more than just artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, robots taking over American jobs, or transgender restrooms at public facilities to accommodate uniformity among the masses. Transhumanism is posthumanism. It is humanism with the optimism taken out. A movement that advocates for transformation and the advancement of humanity through technology that merges humans and machines. Transhumanism runs the gamut of nanotechnology to AI. This paradigm is not limited to gadgets and medicine, but also molds social, economic, cultural, institutional, design, language, and the psyche. Think about all that. To be clear, transhumanism is a manufactured endpoint to human evolution by the year 2030. 
where reproductive and genetic control technologies serve as forms of social control, where technology promotes a scientific dictatorship called scientism, where scientists are gods under the religion of technocracy, where politicians are priests and scientists politicized, where the more you separate yourself from your heart self, the more you create something non-human. Sounds like a lot of what's going on right now. Okay, a democratic society is a manipulated one. Transhumanism is reality of perfect controllable race. This human race began taking shape in the 1930s under social engineers like Edward Bernays, who believed that the conscious manipulation of habits and opinions of the masses is a central feature of a democratic society. Remember Edward Bernays? The guy that literally got everybody to eat eggs and bacon for breakfast? using social engineering tactics. He's basically known as the... I think he's known as the father of propaganda or something like that. Bernays' book, Propaganda, revealed the method of mind control for anyone curious enough to pay attention. And this is from his book. The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested largely by men we've never heard of. This is the logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. Vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner if they are to live together as smoothly functioning society. In almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, in our social conduct or ethical thinking, we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons who understand the mental process, processes and social patterns of the masses. It's they who pull the wires which control the public mind. Edward Bernays, master propagandist. I mean, come on, guys. This is how easy it is. This is how easy it is for people to get involved and to start reading some of this stuff and not just dismiss it as conjecture. Technocracy is the new democracy. Why else are democratic governors and legislators changing behavior and opinion through mandates for Democrats obediently fall in line to support them? Social engineers have manipulated people slash masses through fiction, i.e. Brave New World, nonfiction, film, media, the educational system, politics, religion, sports, Hollywood celebrities, and rigged elections throughout the centuries. And each time people... Masses have consented through their silent acquiescence and participation. Yeah, as in when you go vote. No matter who you vote for, you're giving them permission to rule your life. And just by sitting around doing nothing, you also give them permission. Because you're not going to stop them. Brave New World. Aldous Huxley's novel, Brave New World, predicted a world of bio and social engineering controlled by the intellectual elite, of which Huxley was a member. Huxley described a feature that had already begun to take shape under his pen. To grasp the Huxley-esque nature of the current culture, we only need to look at what he predicted. Listen to his 30-minute speech here. But we're not going to listen to that. We're going to read the quote. There will be in the next generation or so a pharmacological method of making people love their servitude and producing dictatorship without tears, so to speak, producing a kind of painless concentration camp for entire societies so that people will in fact have their liberties taken away from them but will rather enjoy it because they will be distracted from any desire to rebel by propaganda or brainwashing or brainwashing enhanced by pharmacological methods. And this seems to be the final revolution. So think about that. He's calling it the final revolution. There will be no other revolutions after this.
Okay, so in 1962, Huxley gave a follow-up speech to the Ultimate Revolution at Berkeley. We're in the process of developing a whole series of techniques which will enable the controlling oligarchy who have always existed and presumably will always exist to get people to love their servitude. This is the, it seems to me, the ultimate and malevolent revolution, shall we say. And this is a problem which has interested me many years and about which I wrote 30 years ago, a fable, Brave New World, which is an account of society making use of all the devices available and some of the devices which I imagine to be possible, making use of them in order to, first of all, standardize the population, iron out inconvenient human differences to create, to say, mass-produced models of human beings arranged in some sort of scientific caste system. Since then, I have continued to be extremely interested in this problem, and I have noticed that, noticed with increasing dismay, a number of the predictions which were purely fantastic when I made them 30 years ago have come true or seem in the process of coming true. I mean, come on, right? Transhumanism is mind control to shift perception to hybrid society. As perception shifts, the individual is homogenized into an amorphous public persona. The term public health is a public relations term, created in 1913 by the Rockefeller Institute of Medical Research to convince individuals to give up their identity to an outside unseen authority. Yeah, how do you think they got away with the whole situation? That's all we heard, public health. Public health. Public health. Inversion reality. Transhumanism is inversion reality. To create order out of chaos, where up is down, black is white, sickness is health, male is female, abnormal is normal, and uniformity is unity. Transhumanist movement has been playing out before our eyes under the deception of politics, and Hollywood makeup and glamour for more than a century. Transgendered actors have been coming out to be recognized as non-gendered. Caitlyn Jenner is a role model for the right to reshape and choose a different identity. These are influencers, however. What happens when true identity is concealed and used for deception? These Hollywood actors just do what they're told. You know, they probably told them, hey, we'll give you this much money if you do this. Okay. How many Hollywood actors, mainstream news anchors, supermodels, leaders, and politicians are disguised behind wigs, false eyelashes, or beards to create the great deception? What deeper meaning rests behind celebrity worship? The golden idol actors give themselves, or the pentagrams they bow down to on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. People have been measuring themselves against the standard of beauty and worth based in illusion. Does Hollywood entertainment and its teachings go back to the Freemasons, back to Babylon and the Sodomites? To the primordial man, have actors been mocking their audiences openly, as when Stephen Colbert offered a display on national TV in 2006, in which he said, Good evening, godless sodomites. It warps the minds of our children and weakens the resolve of our allies. By giving you a golden idol to worship, kneel before your god Babylon. And that was Stephen Colbert. The transhumanist posthuman agenda is not about the equality of the sexes, since the sexes are meant to emerge into an androgynous blob. Under the trans agenda, the era of social and ecologic inequities are the new standard where nature is unnecessary and human relationships are replaced by a sex box that can cook, clean, converse, or not, and provide for physical needs. Yeah, we're seeing the rise in those. Yeah, a lot of older people are getting them or trying to get them, and it's, it's kind of odd. It's not kind of odd, it's straight disgusting is what that is the deeper agenda is to weaken the male energy as protector and defender subvert the female essence and neutralize the divine through technology such as CRISPR CRISPR genetically modifies can't say that because it'll get taken down but you know where it is to redesign gender at the level of the human embryo to create an androgyne that cannot reproduce or if this technology has been seeded in that word too, I cannot say. That has changed the D dot dot N dot dot A dot of a whole generation. What if the new genetically modified mRNA, you know, not only changes 
D dot dot A dot dot N dot dot. We'll do it like that. <laughs> D A N. But acts as an infertility drug in the same jab. Oh, yeah, this video is probably going to get taken down at least. The transhumanist agenda offers a radical downgrade of humanity. It suggests that we are entering a virtual reality without a discussion of morals or spiritual matters. Or we can transcend our biological limitations with implants and injections. Do we extend life, prevent death, or bring dead back to life even if life is no longer worth living? Are we suddenly convinced that vampires are sexy and adrenochrome is the latest energy drink? Why is the BBC writing about blood drinkers? Do we leave the light behind because the darkness brings a different type of eternity? Do we accept the transgender agenda as infiltrated the classroom to indoctrinate children in kindergarten? In agreeing to the transgender, it's important to know the risks and the consequences of accepting a program that was set into motion many decades ago by an elite class. A program to introduce new technology in the 1990s promised to feed the world with genetically modified foods. In 2000, it became technology of electromagnetic frequencies to download movies faster. When GMO foods were not enough to feed the world, the message shifted to change behavior. For every food shot given in our pharmacy or little clinic, we'll donate a meal to Feeding America. Yeah, so GMOs did not solve world hunger as was told to us. The message of the transhumanist agenda will declare that humanity will go extinct or permanently destroy itself unless transhumanistic technologies are accepted. Are the adverse health effects of GMOs, EMFs, and jab technologies the real reason? Humans need to find new ways to preserve themselves. Has our participation led us to this point? Humanity appears to be repeating a process that led to extinction once before in Atlantis. History wrote that the Golden Age, Silver Age, the Bronze Age ended at the hand of an angry god who destroyed the world because humans went astray. Humanity is again at the end of an age, the Iron Age. If humans accept the angry god story again and follow along with the plan that is laid out. Post-human world. While you, you feel compelled to change, charge forward, sorry, it's often a gentle step back that will reveal to you where you are and what you truly seek. Rashid Ogunlaru. Okay, let's see. Liabilities are unknown. Does the soul remain intact? Can a post-human being with an increased life expectancy, intelligence, health, and memory cease to exist on a spiritual level? Uh, the answer to that is yes. It will cease to exist. On a spiritual level. There is an elite class that exists from all walks of life that includes doctors, bankers, lawyers, police, judges, researchers, military, congressmen, senators, groomed for their position. They travel in exclusive circles and are part of the prominent old families that may sacrifice more than their soul to worship an androgynous god. This new 2017 interview with a whistleblower reveal an agenda that could lead to martial law. Which, I will link this for you guys also, so you can also listen to that. Policy guidance that is not law is being written by a hidden hand to forge a brave new global world. What happens next depends on our mutual cooperation. Those who follow a trans religion have the right to believe what they want, as long as it does not infringe upon another's rights. And those who choose not to believe, their rights must be preserved too. Informed consent means transparency and accountability, which is something that no longer exists. Yeah, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. These people want to take freedom away from each other on either side or any side. Okay, so let's see. Reject technocracy. I'm going to try to hurry up through this. It's pretty long. I wanted to get to one more thing. We're in a critical time in history. However, no one and no group of politicians, scientists, priests, or actors can succeed in isolating people suppressing free speech and subverting human identity without your consent. Knowing who you are protects you. Living beings are governed by natural law, otherwise known as God's law. It's natural law, right? They have rights. If you are a living being, you are not bound by man-made laws without your consent. United States case law from 1796 that still stands today says, It's not a rule, 
binding upon mankind in the natural state. There every man is independent of all laws, except those prescribed by nature. He is not bound by any institutions formed by his fellow men without his consent. Do you understand that? But we give them consent by doing nothing and by partaking in their system still. Okay, so basically, man-made laws or statutes or mandates apply only to persons or legal entities, fictions. Are you, well, yeah, are you a living being? If so, status is, statutes, sorry, have no power over you without your consent. However, do not make a claim of who you are without an understanding of the fundamentals of law or you may incriminate yourself. There is a process to hold your position for more on the fundamentals of law, listen to Tom Barrett. So basically, it just says, reject trend. Well, this is it. Technology must serve everyone. We, we must reject... Yeah, getting all tongue twister trying to read fast. We must reject scientism and be ready to say no when basic freedoms are threatened. It's time to clean house from the ground up, starting with our local governments. Are we humans or robots? Do we own our thoughts and beliefs, or are our minds the property of global elite? As Americans, we must take back the language, take back our morality, reclaim our true identities. We maintain our humanity by connecting to our true selves, connecting to each other, and if not, we enter a world where separation its on the self is the new normal. How about that? How about that? I know it's a lot... To take in, but that's the truth. I'm sorry, it is. And whoever wrote this article was brilliant. Let's move on to one more thing. Okay, here we are over at Last American Vagabond. You guys know who that is? Well, you need to know about the World Economic Forum's 2022 meeting. All right. Yep, the one they just had. More than 2,500 heads of state, business executive, executives, representatives, and non-governmental organizations and media personalities met in Davos, Switzerland to plot the future of the world. As the Davos crowd returns to Switzerland for the first in-person World Economic Forum meeting in more than two years, several topics were at the forefront of discussion, from energy to inflation, Ukraine, Globalization, the Metaverse, ESG, Criteria, the annual meeting of wannabe elitists saw discussions on a wide range of pressing topics. Basically, this article was a brief look, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so Ukraine. Well, most of the diplomats and heads of state commenting on the Ukraine-Russia conflict committed to supporting the Ukrainian government. Former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger started off the week by encouraging the international community to cede some territory to Russia, so there may be peace. Ideally, the dividing line should be return to status quo ante, or ante, sorry. Pursuing the war beyond that point would not be good about the freedom, would not be about the freedom of Ukraine, but a new war against Russia itself, Kissinger said. Kissinger's statements indicate a support for allowing Russia to maintain control of Crimea and informally rule the Donbass region. However, on Wednesday, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky criticized Kissinger for his statements. Quote, It seems that Mr. Kissinger's calendar is not 2022, but 1938. And he thought he was talking to an audience not in Davos, but in Munich of that time, Zelensky said. By the way, the real year, 1938, when Mr. Kissinger's family was fleeing Nazi Germany, he was 15 years old and he understood everything perfectly. And nobody heard from him then that it was necessary to adopt the Nazis adapt to the Nazis instead of fleeing them or fighting them. Meanwhile, Ukraine Foreign Minister Dmitro Kuleba said peace negotiations with Russia are going nowhere. The coming days and weeks will reveal whether the globalist jet-set crowd will listen to Klaus Schwab's mentor Henry Kissinger or Western puppet Zelensky. Oh, here's something that concerns me. YouTube censorship. YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki Further cemented her company's commitment to censoring information that does not align with the official narratives showed by corporate media. Wojcicki made the comments that 
to Allison Chantel Lombardi, editor-in-chief of Fortune magazine, when asked whether YouTube's efforts to censor misinformation will always be a work in progress, she said, quote, I think there, there will always be a work that we have to do because there will always be incentives for people to be creating misinformation, what Jakey said. The challenge will be to keep staying ahead of that and make sure that we are understanding what they are and the different ways that people may use to try to trick our systems and make sure that our systems are staying ahead of what's necessary to make sure that we are managing that. Yeah, as in, we don't agree with you, you're gone. Just like this video is probably going to get taken down. Because the YouTube turned it up. They do not like me at all whatsoever. They really don't. They don't like me at all. Or anybody like me. But if they did like me, then I would worry. Because then I'd have a problem. Because I wouldn't be doing my job. The Metaverse. There were, of course, discussions on the way the Metaverse is shaping the future. Perhaps the biggest announcement involves the World Economic Forum's new initiative, Defining and Building the Metaverse. The World Economic Forum says the initiative will bring together key stakeholders to build an economically viable, interoperable, safe, and inclusive metaverse. This is all just weird. Basically, the announcement was welcomed by Stephanie Burns of Sony, Brad Smith, President and Vice Chair of Microsoft, this guy, former Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister of the UK, the President of Global Affairs with Meta, formerly Facebook, and Peggy Johnson of Magic Leap Incorporated, formerly the CEO of Microsoft, and involved in the ID2020 project. Peggy Johnson also participated in a panel titled Shaping a Shared Future, Making the Metaverse. Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella also participated in a panel with WF founder Klaus Schwab discussing the Metaverse and the future of work. Okay, so... I have to be careful with this one. Uh, how about I just link this and I'll, I'll skip this so I don't have to say it. So basically just this, 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 and that, and whatnot. The next situation. Another panel titled, Preparing for the Next Situation, fe featured Bill Gates, of course, Peter Sands, Executive Director, Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria. Helen Clark of The Who. Francis D'Souza, President and Chief Executive Officer. Illumina, Incorporated. Interesting. Interesting. The presence of D'Souza and Illumina is an interesting choice, especially in regards to the next situation, because the company deals with DNA sequencing and genomics. Additionally, there was a panel called the Post-Situation City, Not Business as Usual, featuring speakers imaging, imagining, sorry, I thought it said imaging, how a city might change in the post-C19 world. Interestingly, participating in the panel, Francis Suarez, Mayor of Miami and President of the United States Conference of Mayors. This detail is worth noting as an example of how a global agenda, Agenda 2030, climate change, sustainable design, starts at places like World Economic Forum and filters its way down to the local level where it's implemented by local officials like Mayor Suarez. Climate change. Of course, climate change was a hot topic throughout the week. There were strong words from Xi Zenhua, China's special envoy for climate change, saying words were not enough. It isn't just about words anymore. It's about action. Climate action now is critical. Also, U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, John Kerry, this guy, said the only way forward was to radically change our economic system and our reliance on fossil fuels. Over the next eight years, Kerry also noted that we have technology to change. We need the political will. If we can harness this, we can still avoid the worst effects of climate change. They're, they're trying to rush it. They're trying to rush New World Order. Come on. Ooh, I don't have much more recording time, guys. I really have to get through this. I should have I should have made more space. Okay, so basic commitment to carbon removal. I will link this for you guys to go through. I just want to get down here to... Okay, real quick. Environmental, social, and governance, ESG criteria. 
One of the methods that companies are using to measure the success of these types of programs to base them on environmental, social, and governance, ESG criteria. ESG investing is also sometimes referred to as sustainable investing, responsible investing, or socially responsible investing. The practice has become an increasingly popular way to promote the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and was on full display at the World Economic Forum in 2022. They literally sat here and openly planned this entire thing out. But you know what? Again, people were concerned with the whole Johnny Depp trial. And not this. Which they should have been this. Central bank digital currencies. One of the most impactful topics being discussed was central bank digital currencies. A panel on CBDCs featured Kristalina Georgieva, Managing Director, International Monetary Fund, Sethaput Sathawartanaraput. Not too bad. Sathawartanaraput. That's a crazy last name. Governor, Bank of Thailand, Francois Villeroy de Gallu. Governor, Central Bank of France, and Axel Lehmann, Chairman of the Board of Directors, Credit Suisse AG. Making the case for digital currencies controlled by central banks. Georgieva took some shots at cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin may be called a coin, but it's not money. It's not stable store of value, she stated. Uh, and central bank digital currencies are? Why? Because you say it is? It doesn't make it true just because you say it is. Francois Villeroy de Gallo, governor with the Central Bank of France, called cryptocurrencies not a reliable means of payment. The reason for this animosity toward private cryptocurrency is that when a thorn in the side of the, of the globalists who seek to end the use of cash in all private financial exchanges that they cannot track and trace. The fact that CBDCs were discussed in several panels with high-level authorities in their respective fields is an indication that CBDCs will continue to be an important part of the WBS Great Reset Agenda. You all know how I feel about cryptocurrencies. They're going to be absorbed. They're going to be absorbed into the central bank digital currency, the new world digital currency. So, I know I skipped some, but I will link this for you guys. But uh, I'll have more for you in the next two days or so, or I might go live. Instead of making a video, I'll let you guys know for sure about that. But I'm about to be out of time here in like less than a minute. So, let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and glory, forever and ever. Amen.